in the French city of Nantes at a Loire River embankment. Destroyer Maë Brézé is moored. She bears the name of the famous French admiral, a nephew of Cardinal Richelieu, and she's the only French surface warship that is preserved as a museum ship. Maë Brézé is a Surcouf class squadron escort ship. She's the last of an 18-ship series built by the French Navy in the 1950s to replace the flotilla leaders destroyed during World War II and the scuttling of the French fleet in Toulon. Three ships of this class were constructed at the military shipyard in Nantes, just in front of us. They were Coussard, Tartu and Geprat. Maï Brezer is one of the squadron escorts of the T-47 class, which represents a development of fast escort ships of the World War II era. They were extremely powerful and fast ships, built primarily for convoy duty. For this reason, the series to which Maï Brezer belongs had the same mission and properties, a fast and powerful ship, able to fight against air, surface and submarine threats with equal efficiency. General specifications of the T-47-class destroyer Maë Brezé as of its construction. Total displacement, 3,740 tons. Length, about 130 meters. Beam, more than 12 meters. Draft, more than 5 meters. Power plant, two Parsons steam turbines and four water tube boilers. Power, 63,000 horsepower. Each boiler room had two boilers. Each boiler had four furnaces. The furnaces were fed black oil heated to 100 degrees Celsius. The heat resulting from the burning warmed the water in the tubes, thus creating steam. Armament. Six model 1948 127mm dual-purpose guns installed in three turrets. Anti-aircraft artillery, three model 1951 twin 57-millimeter guns, four Orlikon 20-millimeter autocannons, torpedo armament, four triple torpedo launchers with a caliber of 550 millimeters. Torpedoes were fired at a distance of six meters off the ship's side with the help of compressed air. They were equipped with an electric motor, which provided them with a speed of 25 knots and a range of five kilometers. Maximum speed, 34 knots. Cruising range, 5,000 miles at a speed of 18 knots. At the beginning of the 20th century, France had one of the largest navies in the world. However, World War I showed that Marine Nationale was in dire need of light forces, cruisers and destroyers. For this reason, the French government made a decision to reinforce their fleet with new ships. Thus, according to the program of 1922, the first destroyer was laid down, a classic French destroyer of the Buras class. Thereafter, these ships were improved. Their maneuverability, propulsive performance, and armament became better and better. And the Sekouf class ships became the apotome of development of these classic French destroyers, although they were built after World War II. 31 years of history separate Burasque-class destroyers from Maë Brezé, which was officially designated as a squadron escort ship. The difference between them is obvious at first glance. The latter is twice as large as Burasque in terms of displacement. Maë Brezé has only two primary armament gun more, but the weight of shells that she can fire at an enemy per minute is five times greater than that of the 1920s destroyer. Apart from this, the artillery of the ship commissioned in 1957 was dual purpose and allowed the crew to fire at both surface and airborne targets. In addition, the Surcouf class destroyers had the most powerful torpedo armament among all French ships as they carried twice as many torpedo tubes as Barrasque. Italy was France's main adversary in the Mediterranean theater of operation, and by the 1930s, Italy had constructed powerful destroyers carrying impressive torpedo and artillery armament, and the French needed an adequate answer to this. Build destroyers? It didn't make sense, because it would be parody, and they needed an advantage. And they came up with their own unique ship, quite large compared to the destroyers of possible adversaries, and quite inexpensive. 
Nous sommes ici donc à la passerelle de navigation euh, du Maillet Brésé. We are now on the bridge of the Maillet Brésé. The predecessors of this ship were destroyers and flotilla leaders from the RD and Vauclen classes. Before World War II, 1938 to 1939, the French Navy built 12 RD class destroyers and 6 Vauclen class flotilla leaders. The latter included a ship named the Maillet Brésé, which tragically perished in the port of Grenoch on April 30, 1940, after one of its own torpedoes exploded. The history of the French Navy knows many dramatic events. Before the beginning of World War II, the Republic's naval forces in Europe were inferior only to Great Britain's. However, in 1940, France suffered defeat against Nazi Germany and surrendered. In 1940, France and the French Navy found themselves in a tragic situation. A puppet or collaborationist government was created in the town of Vichy, headed by Marshal Philippe Pétain. According to the peace treaty between the Vichy government and Germany, the latter pledged not to use the French naval fleet in future hostilities. However, in 1942, the Germans decided not to honor their part of the deal and moved to capture the French warships that were stationed in Normandy and Toulon. The French weren't going to surrender their navy, and I have to praise the heroism of the French sailors, who were not afraid of the repercussions and had the courage to fight for their homeland. They scuttled their ships. In total, about 77 warships were sunk in 1942 by their own crews. Those were battleships, heavy cruisers, light cruisers, and destroyers. After World War II, the French fleet basically had to be rebuilt from scratch. New destroyers were designed to be adequate for modern challenges. The primary mission of this ship was to carry out torpedo attacks against surface targets. At the same time, she was tasked with anti-aircraft and anti-submarine defense of larger ships that she escorted, such as aircraft carriers and helicopter carriers. For this reason, the ship was armed with torpedoes of various ranges, as well as guns with calibers of 127 and 57 millimeters. She also carried different radar and hydroacoustic equipment. We are now in the Combat Information Center, the nerve center of the ship. In this room, information about the position of airborne targets provided by radars was displayed and analyzed. We are passing through the anti-submarine defense control station, which includes the screens for underwater surveillance based on the data coming from sonars, as well as different systems controlling the anti-submarine armament, rockets, torpedoes, and malaform missiles. Here you can see the screens for the bow and towed sonar arrays. They allow the crew to determine the type, position and speed of a discovered submarine. For the crew to quickly get to their action stations, it was the first time in the French Navy's history that a naval tradition had been broken on T-47-class fleet escort ships. This tradition had existed since the sailing ship era. Officers' cabins were accommodated on the stern and crew quarters were accommodated on the fore. They started to arrange officers' cabins close to the action stations, so, in case of a general quarter, the officers could get out of their cabins and be immediately close or already at their action stations. As such, both the crew quarters and the officers' cabins were located evenly across the ship. At the same time, the crew accommodation on Maillet Brezé was quite comfortable for destroyers. All the living quarters were air-conditioned. There was a latrine for every 11 persons and a shower bath for every 17 persons on the ship. Surely, it was very difficult to serve on Sukhouf destroyers, and on Maillet, Brzee in particular. Even those were post-war ships. Nevertheless, they had difficulties with food provision and supplies. However, all Sukhouf destroyers, Maillet, Brzee in particular, had wine, sufficient wine for all the officers and sailors that were serving on these destroyers. 
Initially, all sailors on Mae Breze slept in hammocks. It was a naval tradition that was embraced by many navies around the world. This system was preserved until the 1960s, when the hammocks were replaced with stationary bunks that, by the way, were hardly the favorites among all sailors. What's special about a hammock? First of all, it's lightweight. The second feature of a hammock is that it flows with the motion of a ship during stormy passages, rocking, various surges of the sea, heaving from side to side, so a sailor can sleep pretty much comfortably. That's the beauty of it. The disadvantage of a hammock is that it's difficult to get out of during general quarter. Metal banks were welded dead to the deck, so they couldn't protect sleeping sailors from the motion of the ship. Such cases could happen when a sailor during some storm could experience, for example, his legs above his head or something else. Even special ledges were made for the banks to prevent sailors from falling out of them. Hammocks don't have such ledges because they moved with the ship's motions. However, regardless of such discomfort, a sailor can easily get out of of a bunk and run for their action station. In the French Navy, hammocks were replaced with metal bunks only on surcouf class ships, on Maillet Brise in particular. The next 10 years, from the end of the 1950s, Maillet Brise had been on station in various regions, circumnavigated the globe, and taken action in the Algerian crisis as a constraining factor. Next, in 1968 to 1970, the destroyer underwent a significant modernization. First of all, new main battery guns were mounted. This 100 mm gun has a dual purpose, defense against airborne and surface targets. The primary armament is effective for coast bombardments as well. Its firing range is 12 kilometers for surface targets and 6 kilometers for airborne targets. The rate of fire is approximately one shot per second. Firing efficiency is ensured by a computer and radar complex and a rangefinder mounted directly above the bridge. In the course of the modernization, 127 and 57 mm guns were dismounted. The guns were outdated. The era of missile armaments began. Destroyers fulfilled the usual missions. Aircraft carriers appeared in the French Navy. Destroyers fulfilled missions on escorting aircraft carriers. In other words, they were part of carrier task forces. Coastal security missions and amphibious operations remained. All the missions fulfilled by World War II destroyers were the same as the missions executed by post-war and modern destroyers. There's a slight difference, though. The firing range has increased due to the introduction of ship-borne missile armaments. We're now standing in front of a 375mm missile launcher. It appeared on the ship in 1968 and constituted the ship's armaments until the moment the ship became a museum in Nantes. It's a rapid-fire weapon capable of firing one shot per second. Its shells weighed 300 kilograms and were 215 centimeters long. This is a close-range weapon with a firing range of approximately 1,500 meters. The weapon is capable of hitting a submarine in both submerged and surfaced conditions. Special attention should be paid to the Malafon anti-submarine missile system, an exclusively French design. The first thing is that the missile system was produced in France because you couldn't even imagine purchasing military equipment abroad at that time. The main reason for this is a security matter because armaments produced in other countries weren't worse and were maybe even better than ours. I think it was a specific French feature. We needed all the equipment to be produced domestically. We're now in the Malafon missile compartment. Malafon is an anti-submarine missile. It represents a glider-delivered version of the L-4 torpedo. It launches with the aid of solid booster rockets. This compartment houses 13 torpedoes. Initially, those torpedoes are attached with wings using a hydraulic system, and then they are moved to the launcher at the quarterdeck. Malafon launches 200 meters high and then reaches the submarine's location using radio control. The submarine's location is specified by a whole system of shipborne radars, sonars and computers. Following that, a torpedo releases from a glider thanks to two parachutes and falls down into the water. Using its own sonar apparatus, 
the torpedo could locate a target and destroy it at a 25 to 30 knot speed within a 5 to 6 kilometer radius. The modernization allowed the destroyer to serve in the French Navy until the end of the 1980s. It wasn't until 1988 that Maë Brezé was removed from the French Navy. Afterward, she became a museum, the only surface ship museum in France. Five long years we have struggled to have a ship in our museum. And at last we were told, you're going to receive Maë Brezé that has just returned to the port. We had to establish an association because such a project can only exist for donations. Soon the museum life of Maë Brezé will be longer than her Navy service. She had served the Navy for 31 years and next year she will turn 30 serving as a museum. Moreover, we have obtained historical historical monument status, so now the ship is considered as part of the national heritage, which guarantees her preservation. 